For the last 59 years, Uganda's art, theatre and cultural practices have evolved in ways never seen before. And for Uganda making itself known to the world, through art has never been a challenge. What I got number one over? <laughs> People like Princess Elizabeth Bagaya of Toro is now almost 85 years old, have transcended by both mixing art, cultural modeling and film. A movie she starred in in 1984 called Sheena, released by Columbia Pictures, did not go unnoticed to the whole world. Small person summon small creature. You will grow, my daughter. A fair share of Ugandans have left a mark on the international scene when it comes to film, theater art, and culture on the international level. These include Abe Muchibi, Andrew Benon Chibuka, The Ganda Boys, Ntari Mwine, Florence Kasumba, to mention but a few. Move, or you will be moved. A legend in the field is Charles Jansen Kouke, who was a member in a popular drama group, Bakayimbia Drama Actors, in his career in both film and theatre, has spanned almost 40 years. He has witnessed the industry evolve and progress. Senkoboge says in the 1970s, during Idi Amin's regime, theatre was disrupted. Theatres had no practitioners and cinema halls had no films. Uh, we had storytellers who transited into uh, theatre theater practitioners. According to Senkubuge, who was still a novice in theatre, Amin's political turmoil left no freedom for cultural development in the theatre arts. Writing under censorship needed new forms of dramatists. Our director, Nakatete, wrote a political play, Kateto Mumpembe, and the powers there that were then did not, were not comfortable with the production. They started hunting for him, he had to run into Kenya. From Kenya he went to the to, to US, where he is up to now. Despite the unfavorable environment, in the old times, people were thirsty for drama. Because theatre was the only thing that could entertain people, and theatre made a lot of money by reality hitting when things started to evolve. There was a lot of money in theatre, and the people enjoyed the comfort then, and did plan well. During the modernization of Kampala from the dark city it was, into what it is right now, the theatres relaxed and we are left behind. We didn't tile, we didn't know, we did not modernize our theatres. Ratified by Uganda in 2015, the Convention recognized the right of governments to create an enabling environment for the development of dynamic cultural and creative industries by adopting progressive regulatory frameworks. Robert Bositwa, Public Relations Officer, Uganda National Cultural Center. When the theater was established, it was established with the mindset of the colonial. He shares how it evolved in an African mindset. In the late 80s, 90s, we, we also saw a different genre of performances on this stage, whereby people like Alex Mukulu came on scene uh, with his 30 years of banana. And then later, then comedy came in, you know, currently, because now mainly comedy has been the, the thing recently. The theater has allowed people to stimulously experience joy, loss, love, escape, freedom, and opportunity for moviegoers. For some, it's a place for intimacy and love with people flocking to late night shows or others scarcely populated slots for rare moments of solitude with their partners. For others, the act of visiting cinema halls is associated with carving time for oneself. Busito observes that this is not the same. And uh, if I can take you back also in the, in the 80s, 90s, whenever we could have a performance here, we could have full, you know, full audience. But because of the diversity of the entertainment, things have changed. Because 
Nowadays, somebody can stay in their houses and watch what's happening here. Michael Wawoyo Jr., who is just the new breed of actor for this generation, is a young filmmaker, director, producer, and actor who believes that acting is a calling. He grew up watching his father and this fueled his passion. He is a son of Michael Wawoyo Sr., one of Uganda's most respected filmmakers with experience in location scouting, art directing and acting. This makes him second generation talent, a few rare talents we have in the film. Well, for me, I feel like it's more of a calling than a talent. Um, I feel like it's something God like put in my spirit, in my story. That when I, that when I create Michael, he's going to be this. Um, why? Because since I was a kid, I, I used to follow my dad on sets. I used to go with him and be with him on set. With the escape of many artists into exile, a new era of entertainment and commercialization of the arts developed. When CTV sought opinion on young blossoming stars of the 21st century on whether or not the theatre industry laid a strong foundation for the film industry today, the answer was yes and no. Would it be harsh if I said almost nothing? <laughs> Would I be unfair? Um, we have almost nothing, at least in my perspective. Maybe another filmmaker has a different perspective. Because uh, you see there's a lot of theatres, we had national theatre, this theatre, that theatre. That's contribution. That's them trying to grow the industry. But the unfortunate thing is that uh, they were working uh, with yesterday's uh, technology, you know. So now, for us, where we are now, most of that is relevant to us. As the industry strives to keep raising over years with more interesting projects being made for people to enjoy, Ugandan actors still believe that the audience does not take them seriously like the music industry, hence the film industry, is still struggling to thrive. Right, right now if, if we're moving and we found, uh, let's say, a chameleon making a music video on the roadside, most people will know what Chameleon is doing and they're very likely not to be chased or bothered. But if I start filming my movie on the roadside, in a few minutes there will be, I'll be chased, you know, because people think oh, those guys are just playing. Change the narrative of it's for nothing doers, it's for time wasters, because that was, that was the majority of the, of, the, of, the, of the narrative then. That was what people thought, that's how they perceived art, that's how they perceived all these things. And much as we're still doing baby steps right now, yeah, we're, we're still growing. It's a, I, I still consider this a very virgin market. According to the 2020 Uganda National Cultural Policy Regulatory Assessment Report, despite its ability to employ more youth than any other sector in the economy, the local film and theatre industry is still plagued by a number of challenges, including lack of access to funding, high level of piracy and limited capacity among filmmakers. This was confirmed by the filmmakers. It goes beyond the money. There is all this whole copyright you know, um, thing that's happening. We, our, our movies are being pirated left, right, center. You know, we don't have any laws protecting all those things that, that, that surface. As we celebrate independence, I want to call upon the policymakers and decision makers that it is time we prioritize this sector. Just like they prioritize uh, healthy, they prioritize uh, security and so on and forth. Lukman Ali, a young and blossoming film director, writer and editor says he has been making film for three years now and he's already on everyone's lips. For me, when, I, when I'm coming up with a character, if they have to say the F word, they'll say it. If something raw has to happen, it will happen if it serves the story. So basically, I just make the movies that make me happy. I'm not really concerned about other people. And you'll be surprised how many people actually like that kind of thing. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a substantial impact on the film industry in 2020 and 2021, mirroring its impact across all art sectors. A little bit unlucky with how things went with the COVID. 
So it has kind of thrown everyone, not just us, but even Hollywood, kind of threw everyone off balance. Currently, there's nothing in the theater because of COVID. However, this current situation has also pushed filmmakers and theaters to think of better ideas to keep them performing and earning a living. Nonetheless, we are not just seated. We are also thinking as, as, a, as a, an organization responsible for art and culture because uh, we are coming up with a digital platform, of course, with the support from the government. For long, there has been fear that theatres will fade away. It is ironical that this situation has been anticipated for a long time, but this has not happened. The emergence video on the demand and video streaming platforms such as Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube have only widened their base of viewership and available platforms for the work to be showcased. But without a doubt, there is something electrifying in watching a live performance. The exchange of energy can be found anywhere. From the 1990s, where local soaps such as That's Life Mwatu, Chiganya Ganya, and stage plays like Ndiurida and 30 Years of Bananas, to TV shows like The Hostel, we can now stand with pride and say, we participated and contributed to the international blockbusters like Black Panther. 59 years down the road, we can now say we have walked a journey that is worth celebrating. Eve Masawi, CTV, PM Edition.